the beginning, there was only the void. Thought birth, dark drinker, the heart of all magic. It was itself, the expanse of shifting emptiness, simply the before. Centered around this sliver, a fragment of existence itself, the void was everything and nothing, alive, dead, and dreaming all at once. Then, for seemingly no reason, and yet for every reason, something spawned from the dream of the void. It was a sentient orb of glittering light, energy, and brilliance. Uro, Infinite Unbound, was born, and simultaneously so too did the essence of the void fold in on itself, imploding, leaving only its dormant shell, the expanse of space itself, visible to its new creation. At the moment of its birth, Uro is said to have had every thought that would ever be had all at once. And once it thought of everything, it became bored by what it found. It decided to change everything by imprinting upon existence its own grand design. Uro channeled all the energy of the infinite nothingness and effectively divided itself in half. One half remained pure, floating, sentient energy, but multiplied in size exponentially. It began to accrue its own gravitational pull, drawing in debris and matter from the corpse of the void, beginning what would later be called a planet. Uro's second half became La, the Potter, Sculptor of the Gods. As Uro sealed its remaining self inside the ball of energy and hardening magma, it spoke to its only daughter thus. You are La, that which shapes the formless, and from your shapes must come my legacy. With my soul, you will work wonders. And La, duty-bound, worked wonders. In the first star, made in her afterbirth, she formed a fortress, her home and the home of gods to come, named the Hearth. And in the Hearth she built a great wheel, like those we spin our clay upon, but great La, upon it she spun all that is. From the heat and the flame of the Hearth itself she sculpted her sons. First came Dami Eno, Hammer of the Gods. And without intending to, La gave life to the cold space left in the wake of Damiino's creation, giving him a brother, Vikstar, the dark between stars. And so came to be the brothers celestial. Damiino hammered the myriad stars into light and life, while Vikstar carved roads between them, linking them together in the bleak quiet. But soon the brothers began to bicker and spat, and their fights would rumble the heavens, and the ball of rock and ambition would seethe so La would answer. To find balance between their squabbles, La sculpted Aldwin, the Scales, Overseer. And as he was built to do, Aldwin stopped the arguments he could before they were even to happen, and the ones that went too far he cleaved in twain with word and might. And for a time, things were quiet. But like her ancestor, even in slumber and respite, La was at work. Her dreams were filled with exploration and passion and movement and life, though life as we know it did not yet exist her dreams gathered at the wheel all the star fire and the solar winds and the humming of tectonic plates of the burgeoning planet below and the liquid ichor that flowed in all of Lars children and from this gathering came Sindar all that moves elementalist Sindar was the rebel child she did as she pleased and she in turn pleased very few, but was respected and feared by all as she built a world for all the elements to flow through at once. In their unity, this family of five turned to the now gargantuan ball of elemental fury beneath them, and feeling Uro's will surging through them all, they began to act. 
Drawing power from the new birthed planes across the multiverse, these gods imbued the planet with life. The flora thrummed with diluted ichor, which would soon become water and fill. From the flora would come small moving things that would drink of the ichor and change and grow and grow apart over and over and over. Each creature and thing on this planet has a story and a path that leads back to these gods or the gods to come. But those are stories for other days. When at last the work was done, and the planet was filled, but filled too with chaos, the first family became overwrought. They needed someone to help keep track of all that had come before, and all that was to come. So, La spun the wheel one last time, and from this finality sprung Kirahan, archivist of memory. Kirahan was the first of this family, the Crucible, to inhabit the planet and walk it themselves, sheltering under the massive tree formed when they first touched the soil. With this last work done, these gods, this Crucible, looked upon the teeming globe beneath them, and through their ichor, heard Uro speak once more. Witness, Regolus. Tis mine, and mine alone, but those who writhe upon it are yours, and yours henceforth. Do what you must, please me, and inasmuch serve yourselves. And it is here where things begin to unfold which neither Uro nor any of the Crucible could ever expect. A second branch of their family was about to grow and take root. And it is here, with these new gods, that our story will begin. <laughs>